If you went up to an ordinary individual, itemized in detail every object and person he cared for, then said to him seriously, I intend to smash them all and leave you groveling in the muck, he would become indignant, even outraged. What set Ayn Rand apart from mankind is the fact that she heard the whole itemization and the intention to smash everything in the simple statement that reality is unreal. Most people in our age of pragmatism and skepticism shrug off broad generalizations about reality as mere talk, in other words, as floating abstractions, and react only to relatively narrow utterances. Ayn Rand was the reverse. She reacted much more intensely to philosophical ideas than to narrow concretes. The more abstract an evil formulation, the more territory it included, and the greater, therefore, the destructive potential she saw in it. By the same token, if she heard a basic idea that she regarded as true, an idea upholding reality and reason, for instance, like many of the principles of Aristotle, she responded with profound respect, admiration, even gratitude. Ideas to her were not a parlor game. They were man's form of grasping the world, and they were thus an essential of human action and survival. So true ideas were an invaluable asset, and false ones a potential disaster. Just as Ayn Rand did not detach abstractions from concretes, so she did not allow concretes to remain detached from abstractions. In other words, she rejected today's widespread policy of staring blindly at daily events in a vacuum, then wailing that life is unintelligible. What a man does, she held, is a product of what he thinks. To be understood, therefore, a man's actions have to be seen in relation to his ideas. Whether she encountered an inspiring novel by Victor Hugo accordingly, or some horror spawned by progressive education, or America's thrilling venture into space, or the latest catastrophe out of Washington, or the seemingly incomprehensible behavior of a friend she had trusted. Whatever it was, as you may know from her writings, she was always intent on explaining it by identifying the ideas at its root. Since abstractions in her philosophy are man's means of grasping concretes, she actually used them for that purpose. She would not rest content either with floating theories or with unintelligible news items. She always required a crucial unity, theory and reality, or ideas and facts, or concepts and percepts. 